Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in the Unify Fundamental series here on the Simple Networks YouTube channel. I hope you've got your networking hats on because we are wasting absolutely no time and jumping right in with our introduction to Unify. So in this video, I'm going to cover the basics that you will need to know to move forward in this course. The objective of this video is to lay the groundwork for you to build on as you move through the series. At the end of the video, you should have a general understanding of the Unify ecosystem, its components, and how it all works together. Let's get started. All right, so let's start at the very beginning by answering the question, what is Unify? What are you learning about in this course? Well, at a technical level, Unify is a SDN, or Software Defined Networking Platform, from Ubiquity Inc. Practically speaking, Unify is a complete ecosystem of networking software and hardware from Ubiquity aimed at the home, prosumer, and business markets. Now, why do I use the word ecosystem? I say ecosystem because the idea behind Unify as a product is to be able to build out your entire network infrastructure using only Unify software and hardware. Everything from Wi-Fi to voice over IP to security cameras and door access. Now, you don't have to do this. We'll discuss partial deployments later on in the series, but that's kind of the, that's what they're aiming for, right? That's the general gist of the platform. Now, in general, Ubiquity, makers of Unify, have a very positive reputation in the industry. They're by no means perfect, because no company is, um, but their products tend to be very reliable and very polished. They're also very proud of their non-subscription way or style of doing business, which is great for consumers, by the way. And they are often compared to Apple when talking about their polished presentations and user experience. And this actually makes a lot of sense, because the founder of Ubiquity, Robert Para, was a formal Apple employee. Fun fact, Robert Para also owns the Memphis Grizzlies. So let's take a look at one of their advertisements so that you can get a good idea of their style and demeanor. What subnet are you using in New York again? I'm on dot one zero. Uh -huh, I see. And what about you, London? I'm on dot 20. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm on dot 20. We're going to have subnet conflicts. Well, I'm not changing mine, so you're going to have to change yours. Guys, we really need access to the build server. Can one of you make up your minds? Guys, you know damn well that the administrative distance for external EIGRP routing is 170, not 90. In London, we've told you this 10... Hey there, Unify, what you got going? Oh, this is a centralized visual SC-WAN configuration tool we call SiteMagic. Look, it makes connecting remote office networks together a breeze. You just uh, click on your sites, like the subnet to share, and instantly create as many site-to-site -site VPNs as you want. Can we buy that license from you? Uh, no, not really. Why not? Uh, because it's free. You gotta monetize it, guy. Delete London right now. Now let's look at the different components that go into the Unify ecosystem. There are three main components inside the ecosystem that are always necessary, at least in some capacity, uh, to deploy Unify devices. And it's extremely important that you understand each of these components and how they work together if you want to be successful in implementing Unify for yourself or for others. These components are the controllers, which we have here, software applications, right here, and the networking devices themselves, right here. Ooh, look at that circle. That's nice, isn't it? Um, let's look at each of these components individually to gain a better understanding of what they do. All right, so let's kick things off with controllers. Controllers are a key component in any SDN or software defined network system, including Unify. Now in Unify, the controller is a hardware device that controls all of the other Unify devices on the network. It is responsible for adopting new devices to the network, for applying settings and policy to those devices, for keeping the devices up to date, and for reporting statistics collected by the devices themselves. The controller provides a user-friendly and easy-to-manage interface for you to manage all of your devices from. It accomplishes this by running one or more of Unify's software applications that we mentioned earlier and that we will talk about more in just a second. In the Unify ecosystem, there are three main classes of hardware controllers. You're going to see the word console to refer to a controller device that can run more than one Unify application, like our Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus here. That's my favorite console. 
Um, you're also going to see the term cloud gateway to refer to a combination of a gateway router device and a console, like you see here with the Dream Machine Pro, another good one. And finally, you're going to see devices that uh, can only run one unified application. These are generally for specific use cases and will not have any specific moniker to identify them. They will generally just state which software application they can run on the product page. For those devices, it can only act as a controller for the specific application it's listed for. There are also a few instances in which the controller's duties may be handled either in the cloud or by a specialized device, eliminating the need for a traditional controller. Now, these cases are generally an exception to the rule. So in most deployments, you will be working with a hardware controller of some kind. Uh, and we will discuss these alternative cases in a future part of this series. All right, so I said the controller accomplishes its duties by running one or more of the Unify software applications. Let's take a look at all of the different software applications included in the Unify ecosystem. And holy moly, are there quite a few different applications in the Unify software suite. Now, each one is designed to manage a specific set of Unify devices. So Unify Network, as the name suggests, is for managing devices like gateways, switches, and Wi-Fi access points. It's probably the most widely known and widely used, as it is the original piece of software in the suite. Now, Unify Protect is for managing a wide variety of security cameras. Unify Talk is a full service voice over IP system, providing both the phone service itself as well as the hardware and management. Unify Access is a comprehensive access control platform. Think of door security and swipe access, things like that. Unify Connect is for interactive audio visual and signage, pretty cool. And Unify Identity is for centralized IT management. Now, while each of these software applications are designed for a specific purpose, uh, when deployed together, they start to integrate seamlessly to provide a unified uh, experience. So you don't have to deploy them all. You can simply deploy the applications that make sense in your environment. Um, and if all you need are security cameras, you would just deploy Protect. If all you needed was voice over IP phones, you would just deploy Talk. Now, I know that's quite a bit of information to take in all at once, but for now, you just need to be aware of each application and what they are used for. All right, now we're getting to the fun stuff. So let's take a look at the hardware devices that all of those applications are going to be managing. Ubiquity makes a metric butt ton of devices for the Unify lineup. They, of course, have their tried and true networking gear like your gateways, routers, switches, Wi-Fi access points, and the like. They also have a small range of voice over IP phones and accessories to work with talk. In terms of security cameras for Protect, they have an extensive line, uh, which includes not only traditional security cameras, but bullet style cameras, hidden in wall cameras, as well as doorbell cameras. So quite a big line there. You've also got a decent selection of access control systems and accessories to work with the Unify Access software, including door strikes and card readers. Uh, the Unify Connect line features a small collection of interactive displays and accessories. They even have electric vehicle chargers, if you can believe that. All of this under one ecosystem. Unify truly is, or is truly is going for at least, the one-stop shop type of deal. All right, so all the technical stuff is great, and it's very important for you to know. But now let's look at a couple example deployments so you can visualize how these devices are going to work together. In this example, we have our ISP modem getting us our connection out to the internet. We have a Unify Gateway Pro for our routing and gateway needs. Attached to the Gateway Pro is a 24-port Unify switch for us to connect all of our devices to. Connected off of our switch is a Unify G4 bullet camera for security, a Unify UAP AC Pro for connecting all of our phones, tablets, all of our wireless devices. And we've got generic Dell Tower server here that we'll say is acting as a storage server in this example. Now, from the information you learned in the previous slides, and with you just being a very smart person in general, you know that the camera, access point, switch, and gateway all are going to need some sort of device to control them, right? So, hmm, what would we do? Oh, oh, look at that. It's a cloud key. Gotta love the cloud key. So the cloud key Gen 2 Plus 
is a very powerful Unify console and is running both the Unify network application to manage our switches, access points, and gateway, as well as running the Unify protect application to manage our security cameras. You can see I also put slash NVR or network video recorder here as the cloud key does have a hard drive in it that it uses to record our camera footage, a requirement of any device that runs Unify Protect. Now it can kind of seem weird to have the cloud key sitting at this area in the network topology. It almost seems like it should be up here, right? Um, but it really is just another device attached to the network. So Unify devices come pre-programmed from the factory to automatically report to the controller on the network. Once your controller has gained control of your Unify devices uh, through a process known as adoption, which we will discuss in the next video in this series, it will then maintain a connection to all of the Unify devices and act as a middleman between you, the user, and the devices. All right, so let's look at another example deployment with a slightly different configuration. Now you will notice that it looks mostly the same as the previous example, except in this example, we are missing the cloud key. And that's because this time around, we are using one of Unify's cloud gateways, which we know now is a combination of a gateway router and a Unify console. In this case, we are using the Dream Machine Pro, which you see right here at the top. Um, the Dream Machine Pro is essentially the gateway pro you saw in the last slide, uh, combined with the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus that was also featured in the last slide. This means that the Dream Machine Pro will be handling all routing and gateway activities. It'll be running Unify Network to manage not only itself, but to control all the switches and access points. And it's also going to be running Unify Protect to manage our security cameras and record footage. Again, in this case, it does have a hard drive in it to record that footage, so it's technically an NVR as well. So even after years of working with Unify stuff, I've been a uh, Unify fan for a long time, I still think this stuff is super cool. They pack quite a bit of functionality into these devices. Whew, that was a lot of information, but you got through it. Well done, give yourself a pat on the back. You should now have a basic understanding of the Unify ecosystem and how it works. I encourage you to go back through the video and revisit any topics you may be confused about. The slide deck will be available down in the description for download. And if you're super invested, you can do a little homework by heading over to the Unify store and taking a look around. Browse through the different categories of equipment and see if you can identify which devices would be controlled by which Unify application. Also look through their different hardware controller options and see if you can identify which devices match each of the descriptions given in this video. Here's a little hint for you, you can. Um, one, because like I mentioned before, you're just a super smart person in general. But also because most of the information in this course was either pulled or checked <laughs> against the Unify store and their website. So if you have any questions, be sure to jot them down and either leave them in the comments below. I'll be down there answering stuff. Um, or you can go and research the answers for yourself if you're feeling a little ambitious. So stay tuned for the next video in the Unify Fundamental series in which we will focus specifically on the Unify network application. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you got immense value out of this video. If you did and you want to see the rest of the series as it comes out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, leave a comment down below if you so wish. And if you want to contact me for consulting, you can always feel free to do that at sendomamediatech.com backslash contact. The link for that will be down in the description. Have a great rest of your day.